What is up guys, Vulcan here, and today, first off, I am going to give you my, you know, first impressions on these balance changes, and then I am going to show, I'm not sure the exact number of decks yet, but a couple of decks that I've kind of theorycrafted and taken from old metas that I think will work pretty well in this new update that is coming out tomorrow, but honestly, by the time this video gets out, it'll probably already be out. So, first off in this balance change, Royal Ghost has uh, a significant nerf. So, its damage went down by 6%. Um, the invisibility delay went down to from 7 sec 0.7 seconds to 1.2 seconds, which is huge. And the hit speed went down from 1.7 seconds to 1.8 seconds. Overall, I mean, this is a pretty big nerf. So yeah, I just did some quick number crunching, and it looks like the Royal Ghost will, at turning standard, do exactly 216 damage, which means that it'll still one-shot things such as Princess, um, Dark Goblin, Goblin Gang, and that sort of thing. So none of those interactions will change, but combined with the hit speed nerf, it'll overall be around uh, well over a 10% overall damage uh, decrease, which is a pretty big deal. And I think even more big of a deal is the is the um, invisibility delay because now that it doesn't have that delay interactions where it would say it's going against a spear golem hut, it would hit a spear golem and then instantly turn invisible. Well, now it's going to take um, half a second longer to turn invisible, which will allow your tower to get um, potentially about, by the looks of it, because the hit speed of a tower is one second. So I would think that it would allow your tower to get two shots off on a Royal Ghost when it goes from invisible to visible because it'll be invisible for 1.2 seconds now and I think since the hit speed of a tower is one second it'll get two shots off from the Royal Ghost. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And yeah, so that's a that's a pretty big deal. Just imagine all those times that the Royal Ghost got your tower uh, with like one HP. Well, now all those times are going to significantly go down. And I mean, overall, Royal Ghost was kind of like, I don't know, I, I didn't really like the card. It's kind of like an awkward card to play. It didn't really make sense in a lot of decks, but it was just like, it was literally so overpowered that you kind of, you could literally stick it in any deck and it worked. So like, minor, like, beat down, like, you shouldn't be playing Royal Ghost with a giant deck. It just, it doesn't have good synergy. Like, something like a Prince, that, it makes sense with a giant deck. And something like a Night Witch, it makes sense, but it shouldn't fit in every single deck and I think that's the problem now it'll work well in like minor decks and um and even like bait I don't think Royal Ghost should be it was really popular in that Ice Wizard uh log bait deck and it just didn't make sense because you need the knight to tank for the um the goblin barrel but with the Royal Ghost you could send a Royal Ghost goblin barrel and it shouldn't be effective but it was and like I don't know uh, so I'm not a big fan, and I'm I'm glad they nerfed it because it just it's just gonna make it's just gonna make a lot more sense now. Um, and then I guess moving on, Zappies, Zappies. It, this is exactly what I still need to happen. Um, the only problem with this is that like a lot of people are like, well, now Zappies are gonna be exactly like Electro Wizard, but really it's not exactly like Electro Wizard. They're both four elixir, and they both target air. So. But the only difference is that an Electro Wizard has a spawn zap, and there's only one of him. Zappies are going to be three Zappies, and Zappies take, like, when you place down a Zappy, it takes, like, two seconds before it starts firing. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, I literally, well, actually, I'm trying to play Zappies right now in the background, and it's just, like, they they just they just don't work. But now that it'll shoot air, it, um... It won't be easily countered by like a Mega Minion and Minions, which is actually like a big problem for the card. And it'll actually be reliable, but they're not like, they're still not going to be good if anything's like Hog Rider and stuff because they literally take so long to start shooting. And the interaction between like Hog Rider is not good. So if you have like a Hog Rider versus Zappy, it's going to destroy it. If you have Miner versus Zappies, the Zappies aren't going to do that much just because it takes so long to start shooting that the hog would be dead either way by the time they even start shooting. But versus like um, Lava Hounds, like a giant golem, they'll still be, they'll actually be pretty good unless your opponent gets a valuable poison on them. So it's just going to be a matter of can you bait out that poison before um, it, before like you defend with a Zappy. So overall I think Zappies will kind of have a role in the game 
I don't think they'll be that good still just because they take so long before they start shooting. When they were first released, I actually thought that the Zappies were two Elixir cards. No, I think I thought they were three Elixir cards. And then I started playing them, and I was I still thought they were three Elixir And I just looked at them like, wait, these are four Elixir cards? Like, no wonder they're so terrible. But yeah, now, they're, now they shoot air, I think they'll kind of have a role. Still not be super powerful, but it, they'll be usable. Yeah, they'll be usable. Still one of the weaker cards in the meta. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I, I don't know. Maybe there'll be like one deck with Zappies that's good, and then like... But they're not going to be in every deck. And then the Hunter, range down by four. Um, this and also bullet spread is slightly smaller. Projectile range range at 6.5. So this is interesting because, like, it's kind of Hunter is a confusing card. So another problem I have Hunter that I also have with Zappies is that a lot of time they die before they actually start like doing damage. So I'm. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is really going to change that. I think the the significant interaction this is going to change is that, well, first of all, it's not going to char target cards that are far away. When it's like, say, targeting like a giant or something from like um, five tiles away, it's literally doing like zero damage to that giant. Like it's completely like maybe like ten damage or something. And when it's up close, it does like seven hundred damage or something ridiculous. So this is gonna, and then this is also going to be a big deal because. When that hunter walks up to the tower um, on offense, instead of doing like 10 damage to your to the opponent's crown tower or whatever, it's going to get a lot closer and do a lot more damage. I mean, I'm not sure the exact numbers because it's hunter's just kind of confusing. It's hard to like figure out the exact numbers for him, but it's going to be a lot better on offense. I think is the big takeaway here. On defense, it'll be pretty much the same, but it will walk closer to troops on offense, which means it'll get off more damage and I mean overall I don't think this buff is gonna make it like insane just because a lot of times when you use hunter he ends up like you I mean if you use him you really have to protect him well that's why he really only he doesn't really work in beatdown decks that well I mean you only really see hunter with like kind of cheaper decks he kind of works in giant but at the same time like not really just because your opponent can get like so much tornado or poison value on him I mean, we'll have to just kind of see how he plays out, but I really hope that this especially changes, like, the um, like the minion interaction. I don't know. I hope that this doesn't make it worse against minions. I hope it makes it better because versus, like, minions, if you have a hunter, you play, like, right in front of the minions, the, um, the hunter will die. Like, the minions will, like, insta-kill the hunter. Even though it'll get a shot off, it will, like, completely miss all the minions, and it's, like, a terrible interaction. So... I hope that this makes it so that it's like it's a little bit better against swarm troops, um, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to kind of see how it plays out. It's really hard to theorycraft with the hunter just because um, it's just like such an unusual card. I like it, but like it's just hard to tell in advance what's gonna happen. So then, the night witch is getting a buff. Initial bats spawn quicker. The only reason that they're doing that is just because they're nerfing the bats, and they just want to kind of keep it at the same power level. They probably tested that out. They don't give exact numbers, but yeah, it's just because they're nerfing the bats, which, um, I, overall, I'm glad they did. They didn't nerf it, like, so much that it's going to be, like, complete, a completely useless card or something. It's just, like, it's just a tiny nerf, and bats are just, like, a tiny bit too powerful in those, like, zap bait decks and stuff. When you put them in a deck that, um, doesn't have zap bait, they really weren't that good. The only time they were useful is when you had it in a quick cycle where you could out-cycle your opponent's zap. But if it's in zap bait and they don't have a choice, like they have to save their zap for the Infernal Dragon, bats just get like a tiny bit too much value. But I think with this hit speed decrease, it'll be like maybe a 10% less um, DPS. And overall, it's I, th I think it's a pretty good change. Not not significant. It's not just gonna nerf the guards in the ground. Um, they're still gonna be viable in every single deck. They're still viable in. So not much of a difference. Just like a tiny tiny bit. I, I'm really glad that they didn't reduce them to four because then they would have been like a useless card, just as useless as it used to be. So I think this is definitely the change that makes most sense. And then we have the Lava Hound. Hit points up 5%. I mean, I don't know. I think Lava Hound was a bit too weak, but it, honestly, the reason that Lava Hound has really been struggling lately, in my opinion at least, is because of the bats because if you can bait out if 
if um, you're versing a Lava Hound deck and you can bait out your opponent's Zap or their Poison or something, your bats can get an insane amount of value. And they just, they decimate the Lava Hounds. They decimate Balloons. And that's kind of why Balloon has also fallen out of the meta, just because bats are so dominant. And, I mean, not even because, it's like the bats and the Tornado um, combined just kind of shut out Lava Hounds. So, I guess I'm glad that it got a buff, but if people stop using, like, Tornado and they stop using bats, then Lava Hound is going to be so dominant. And, um, but I don't think that's going to happen because they didn't nerf, uh, bats into the ground. They didn't nerf Tornado into the ground. So, I think that that was a pretty good change. And, here we go. Uh, the Goblin Hut. The spawn speed is reduced to 0.9 from 0.9 seconds to 5 seconds so one less spawn in total and to be honest that's exactly what I said if I really I probably would have given it like two less spawns I think three would be too much it's just like Goblin Hut just gets uh, one too many hits type of things um, versus like an expo deck or something uh, Goblin Hut is terrible versus Giant Goblin Hut is terrible versus Golem Goblin Hut is I mean it's honestly not even that good it's really it's like it's like fringe being good the only reason people even play it is because um, it's an investment building and if you don't want to well there's two there's two scenarios one scenario is to bait out the poison which I think is exactly the type of deck that Goblin Hut should be in I think it should be a poison bait card but the problem is that people were playing it in zap bait decks and it's just like you don't want a poison bait card in a zap bait deck it just doesn't make sense you like so I'm glad they took off um, one more goblin, but I'm glad they didn't nerf it into the ground. And as I said, I think the only reason people are using it is because the elixir pump was nerfed. And like, there's just a lot of deck archetypes that is just like really good to have a zap bait. Uh, not a zap bait. It's really just it's really good to have um, an investment building in. And Goblin Hut was that investment building because right now pump isn't that good in the meta. Um, Furnish isn't that good in the meta, Barbarian Hunt isn't that good in the meta, and really those are the only investment buildings. So I guess the argument here could be, well I don't want any investment buildings in the game. But then it's like, well you just never want to see Goblin Hut played. So I don't know, I don't I don't think this is going to make too much of a difference. I think it's going to be used in all the same decks that it's still used in. But like honestly, if you look on like ladder or something, like. Really, Goblin Hut was not even used that much. I'm looking at the Stats Royale website right now, and if I'm reading this right, it looks like Goblin Hut only has about um, a 12% usage rate on ladder and uh, like 4% usage rate in Tourney Standard. So, I don't know, maybe I'm reading that wrong, but I don't think I am. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't even see Goblin Hut that much. Like, it's like, yeah, I see a, a fair amount, but it's not like... It's in every single matchup that I play. Sometimes you get unlucky and you verse it like five times in a row. But, I mean, it's... I don't know. I think I think it's fine. I, I think that a lot of people kind of overrate it. And that it's just like... The problem is just that the win conditions that Goblin Hut pairs well with are just so good right now. And the win conditions that it doesn't pair well with are, you know, not as good. So, I don't know. I think, I think it's kind of fine. Um, it just sees kind of a bit more counterplay, and it's just like a tiny bit too strong. But with this nerf, I think it'll be a step in the right direction. Maybe even one less spear golem, then I think it'll be like perfectly balanced. Um, so yeah, so then next up we have the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Lumberjack. I'll just say them both together. They both got a hit points plus 7%. And I mean, that's pretty significant. The, the thing that I was thinking about before this balance, I'm like, dang, those cards are going to be so strong. But then I was like... Well, you know what? Um, Mega Knight, it's one of those cards that's like, it kind of needed a nerf. And I heard one person say, I don't remember whose channel it was on. It was probably like Clash of the Ashes. Not, don't quote me on that, though. But I heard um, that the spawn, uh, not the spawn jump, that the jump ability should have removed. The spawn damage should stay the same, but, you know, when it jumps onto another troop, that, that should just be removed. And I thought, you know what, that's a really good idea. But they decided to not take that route, not uh, nerf the spawn jump. But what they did was they buffed Mini P.E.K.K.A. and they buffed Lumberjack. So now when um, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. the uh, Mega Knight comes down with his like splash damage and um, with his spawn damage, I should say, and hits that Mini P.E.K.K.A. and hits that Lumberjack, they're gonna get 
like a couple more hits off of him so he's not going to be um, quite so good on offense taking out the mini peck and lumberjack and also the mini peck and lumberjack will stand withstand like another hit from like an executioner um, another hit from like all the ranged troops and overall I think it'll be a pretty good buff but it's not going to make them overpowered or anything just because they're four elixir and they're still like guards are still going to counter them just fine um, goblin games are still going to counter them with goblins and it so and then Mega Knight it'll still it'll still kill them uh, on a one on one situation, but I think that the major takeaway from this is just that they're going to be a lot better against Mega Knight, and just because it's so dominant in the meta, I think I think that's really the major takeaway. And I'm glad they didn't like buff their damage or something because they're already really good at taking out like golems and stuff. And then mortar, so the minimum range went from 4.5 to 3.5. And I'm so glad they did this because one thing I've been noticing lately when playing against Mortar on Ladder is something that I I don't know, I swear it was a bug because I do not remember for the life of me that this used to happen. But I would like play a Musketeer, you know, to snipe down a Mortar because the Musketeer is a really good Mortar counter. But then I play the Musketeer and the Mortar would just shoot over the Musketeer and I'd be like, what in the world just happened? And it was because... Um, I would place the mortar, or not, I would place the musketeer inside the mortar's dead zone, and so the mortar would just ignore the musketeer and get like two shots off of my tower. So I'm really glad that they did this change because now when I play musketeer, pretty much regardless of where I play her, the mortar is not going to shoot over the musketeer. The mortar is going to target the musketeer, and therefore it won't get like 500 damage off your tower because you misplayed your musketeer like one tile too high like now it'll um and then especially against like archers and stuff it won't just ignore those range troops that are shooting at it it'll shoot those range troops and not hear tower and overall it won't be a significant nerf but i mean i think that it's an interaction that should have been there in the first place i thought it was but apparently i'm wrong like i i don't know i just been noticing it recently and i think that it's like I love Mortar and I play Mortar a lot, but I think it's a needed change. It was like, it was a thing about Mortar that annoyed me. <laughs> like, I would be like, what? I just play that. I thought I played that in the right position. It's shooting my tower. How's he? Yeah, I, I would get like, you know, kind of annoyed that that happened. So I'm glad they made that change. Even though I'm a Mortar user, I think it makes perfect sense. So yeah, now my video is at uh, like 19 minutes, and I said I was going to show some decks, and I'm going to show some decks. Um, I might have to cut out a little bit because I've, man, I've been rambling longer than I thought I have. But let's get into some good decks. So yeah. Um, okay, so let's get into these decks. First off, I think that now that Royal Ghost is, well, it's not going to be completely gone, but I think it'll even take like one less shot to kill the three Musketeers. So and it won't be played in every single deck in the meta. So I. Th I think that it'll be, I think that three Musketeers will come back into the meta and this not, might not be the exact deck list, but I think it is pretty strong and the other deck list really only had, uh, the only difference was it had guards instead of Goblin Gang and Royal Ghosts instead of um, Battle Ram, but I think the guards might, you know, be more popular in this meta, but I think that um, with the Royal Ghost nerf, it just really won't make sense in a three Musketeers deck anymore. So, um, it will, so yeah, I think th this is going to be the deck I'm going to try for three Musketeers at least, and I think it'll start making a lot more sense. Uh, one interesting card that, uh, wasn't really good in the last meta is the Minion Horde, just because it, it would literally just fly over a Royal Ghost and ignore it, but now that Royal Ghost isn't going to be as predominant in the meta, I think you're going to see a huge rise in, um, uh, Minion Horde usage. And you probably already see it a lot on ladder, and that's just because not everyone has a max roll of ghosts there. But like in tourney standards, it wasn't used that much, and I think there's definitely going to see a big rise in minion horde. And that's why I've included it in several of the decks that I have here. And then the next deck that I think is going to kind of come into the meta is, well, it's like pretty much the exact same deck as last meta. The only difference is that um, it has lumberjack instead of roll of ghosts, and I think lumberjack's going to be the replacement. Um, it might, you know, it might see a couple different cards, but I think the deck is still pretty solid, and even with the Goblin Hunt nerf, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. 
I think it it might even be stronger in this meta than the last meta. The Royal Ghost was kind of an awkward card in that deck, mainly just because it wasn't good at defending other Royal Ghosts. So I it I guess we'll just have to see kind of how it plays out. But I'm definitely gonna test out this deck, and I think this deck's gonna probably be the best Golem deck in the meta. I mean, it obviously depends on how the meta shakes out, but it's definitely what I'm trying. And then this deck, so. As I said earlier, um, minions have not really been that good just because Royal Ghost has been so popular and they're really not that good against it. But now that it's not popular, not going to be as popular, I think this deck is going to be really solid and um, it's going to come back. And the only thing that I'm not sure about is like the triple cell spell scenario because now they don't verse like um, a lot of bait. You don't really need triple spells that much. So it might see a little bit of like changing cards and pop and um the popular deck list but i think that this deck at least my first opinion is this deck just makes a lot of sense i really liked it in a lot in uh, two metas ago and i think i'm gonna really like it in this meta i think it's gonna be really solid and then my next deck is um i think that bait's gonna uh continue to be in the meta but i think there's gonna be a different version i'm not claiming it's gonna be this version i just kind of threw some cards together and thought oh that looks like a good deck kind of but um, I think that the Royal Ghost and Bait will just like disappear. I don't think it makes any sense in Bait decks, and I hope that it stops being played in them. It just like feels like an awkward card in your Bait deck. But I think that Bait will still remain strong in the meta. I think it's just gonna see um the main deck list is gonna see some changes, and we'll just have to kind of test stuff out. And somebody will come up with a deck, and then everyone else will copy it, and it'll it'll come back in the meta. Bait's not going anywhere. Um, and then. Uh, giant. I, I think that Giant is just gonna skyrocket in usage. I mean, it's so good against, like, the Goblin Hut decks. It's good against the Zap Bait decks. Um, and it's just over overall a good archetype. Um, I, the, this was, like, the same deck that a lot of people have been using on Ladder. Um, you look in TV or L, it's like, let's see... right nova big dinny um might be the only one yeah as you can see that this minion deck i mean this this is coming back in the meta for sure no one has a giant deck and uh adam has a giant deck i mean you look it there's always a giant deck in c for all lately and i've been talking to top players and they're just like man giant is broken so yeah, I think Giant's going to be good, and I think that that means that uh, what's not going to be good in the next meta, I don't think Lava Hound's going to come back. I mean, 5%, it, it'll be used, maybe a little bit, but it without the bats and Tornado being like decimated to the ground in Inferno Dragon, it's it's not going to be that popular. Um, I think that Beatdown will remain strong. I think P.E.K.K.A., with all the buffs to like Prince and Vinny P.E.K.K.A. and L Lumberjack, P.E.K.K.A.'s just kind of falling out of the meta. It's just like... Why would you use P.E.K.K.A. when you can just use mini P.E.K.K.A. and get the same amount of damage for three less elixir? So, yeah, P.E.K.K.A.'s, it's, I think it's just going to keep decreasing and decreasing. I think eventually they're going to need to buff it or it's just going to completely fall out of the meta, to be honest. Um, and then, I think that Giant Skeleton is going to stay terrible. I, yeah, as I said, Expo is going to fall out of the meta. Balloon with all the tornado going around, it's, it's not going to be. I mean, it's going to be viable, but not that strong. Uh, three Musketeers is going to come back strong. Uh, I think one of the top ten decks this next season will definitely be still be three Musketeers, just like every season. Um, Hog Rider, probably the same usage rate. Royal Giant, no one's going to use it. And as far as the as far as the win condition, uh, the win conditions that pretty much is it. And yeah, sorry if I was kind of all over the place, um, trying to collect my thoughts, you know, not always the easiest thing to do. Um, I, I probably don't have to edit this video a little bit, so there might be some, like, awkward, like, breaks, but it's just because I kind of, like, edited out some stuff just to shorten the video. And, yeah, uh, overall, I'm really excited for this balance change. I think they changed, like, everything that needs to be changed. They're not really, like, oh, man, they didn't nerf such and such. They didn't nerf such and such. Like, I think, I think it was pretty good. I mean... Maybe like a couple minor tweaks to some cards, but like n nothing that is that big of a deal. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the arena. That was cringy. Vulcan out!